Hey Peyton, this is Adam. Putting this video together for you. Kind of quick, but uh, give you a good overview on this DM1. Let's take a look. So we got it set up with two double station vices. Uh, let me back up a little bit here. You can see it's a nice compact footprint. You can pretty much stick it in the corner. Um, those, that little rack on the front of the tool holders, that's uh, aftermarket, or well, basically, we took a rack from an older Haas uh, VF that we had left over and stuck it on this machine. Uh, in the back of the machine, those are the chip chutes. They dump right down into those trays. Um, this is really messy right now. Uh, shouldn't look like that. Um, you've got a coolant filter right there. Panels on the sides of the machine are solid. There's no windows or doors. Uh, you can see inside it's got the augers. Uh, tool probe. The minimum quantity lubricant misting. Uh, got one of our coolant rings on it, so that's not a Haas factory thing. It came with a pretty decent setup, um, just not quite as efficient as one of our coolant rings. Um, I'll go ahead and just close the door for a second. I'll run through a cycle. say more considering we've got it sitting right next to a VF2 SS or an SSYT not that that matters for the spindle but that machine the VF2 has a 15,000 rpm spindle it's no more powerful than this one we run this machine just as hard if not harder and it takes every second of it now I'll go through a quick list of pros and then I've got a couple of cons too uh, like I said, the super fast 2400 inch per minute rapids, uh, compact footprint, house control is pretty much second to none. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Um, it's lightning fast. The high speed machining never skips a beat. Um, three axis, four axis, five axis, doesn't matter. Um, and the newer controls have even more features like that VF2 has an next gen control. Um, so you can use um, you can use some of the newer features on the next gen that aren't available on this first gen control. So um, I mean, this machine will easily outperform anything in its class. There's nothing even remotely close to it. There's no Doosan or any of these other Taiwanese machines or anything like that that come close to most of the Hazes, but the DM in particular. Um, now, again, on the pro side, axis acceleration, um, it's super fast. Um, this has more axis or servo thrust in the X than a VF2 or a VF3 or a VF4 for that matter. So they basically take that 
servo power and turned it into axis acceleration on this machine. So on other machines, they may have the rated thrust for cutting power. On this machine, they use a high pitch ball screw and they use it for acceleration. And I haven't come across anything where we couldn't um, we couldn't perform heavy cuts in different materials or anything like that to see that there's any kind of a problem with there being such a high pitch ball screw. So uh, you know, I've heard the argument that they use these ball screws and it you're sacrificing cutting torque. I haven't seen that. We've cut 4340, 4140, um, regular hot rolled, uh, 300 series stainless, 174, um, 400 series, you name it. Um, we've cut it on this machine and it doesn't skip a beat. All right, now cons. Obviously, tool changer, it's 18 plus one. So you've only got 19 tools. Um, you can also only run 5.4 inch length tool. So like this particular one right here, that tool's on the edge. That's just about as long as you can possibly use in this machine. So one of two things, um, use really short holders like we tend to use on, on a lot of tools like this one right here. So they call it, sometimes they call them zero Z. Basically it's an ER32 collet chuck and the collet is um, machine down into the taper of the, like it, it's basically there's there's no projection it's below the gauge the bottom of the collet is below the gauge line um, and really there's no disadvantage to those tool holders um, I don't particularly like the nut because I like the other style where it's um, flush at the top so you can you have access to the entire tool you don't have like in this case, the nut kind of shrouds part of the shank of the tool. Um, when the height of the holder is not an issue, I would prefer to have uh, either a solid holder like that, a shrink fit, or something like that. That's a TG100 where um, it's flush at the top, so you have access to the entire tool, the shank and whatever else. Like if you were using a really long length of cut and you needed all the depth you could get, I would lean towards something like that. That way you don't have part of the tool covered by the nut on the tool holder because you want to keep the tools as short as you possibly can. Least amount of projection out of the collet anyway. Um, now, one really bad thing that I've had happen with this machine is it has actually dropped some tools. Um, this is the first machine I've ever had of any machine, um, not just Haas, and I've had about 20 something Haas's um, this is the first machine I've ever had where the tool changer actually uh, chucked a tool out of the tool changer arm. It's not supposed to be able to happen. Um, these fingers right here are supposed to lock after it picks up a tool. Um, you'll see it, like right now, there's a, there's a pin that's depressed. When that pin is depressed, it unlocks um, that finger right there. So when the tool is in the uh, tool arm it's not supposed to be able to come out well for whatever reason this thing chucked a couple of tools and when I called Haas about it uh, I didn't get a really good response they uh, they sent a service guy out and he looked at it and he kind of shrugged his shoulders and said uh, you know uh, I don't know and I wasn't at all happy with that response um, we basically took it upon ourselves to make some adjustments and um, I, I basically found uh, a couple of nicks. If you look really close inside the tool changer arm there, you can see that it looks like it's been ground on and that's because it has been. Um, it had some nicks in it where it looks like it had uh, went to grab a tool and maybe the tool wasn't in the right position and it just kind of slammed into the arm. Um, how's basically tried to put that on us and my argument is we have no control over that the only thing we ever can do is 
we can call the tool change, so everything is automatic. It's not like we have any, there's no time where we would be changing the position of the tools in the spindle or anything like that. So, anyway, that's my one big complaint on the machine. Um, I believe that it was um, very poor customer service from that particular guy. And uh, Haas, as you know, him being an extension of Haas, I can't help but pin that on Haas. Um, the other issue, which um, isn't a customer service issue or anything like that, it's a little bit of a design issue. It does not handle chips very well. Um, with the stock cabinet the way it is, like without adding any coolant or anything like that, like a wash down, a shower type thing, uh, the chips just kind of sit in the apron. Um, they don't get down into the auger unless you wash them down. And even with doing that, those little chip baskets in the back fill up really fast. So um, they do have an option for uh, a lift up style chip auger that goes in the back of the machine. Uh, it's about $3,000. Uh, not knowing what this machine looked like before I bought it, I didn't think it was really necessary, but if I had it to do over today, I would definitely opt for the $3,000 option. Um, and as far as other options go, um, you really don't need any, in my personal opinion. Uh, I got it with the with the air gun for the minimum quantity uh, oil lubricant, which is just mineral oil. Um, they charge way too much money for it. You could do it yourself for a fraction of the cost because basically they charge you about $3,000 when it's all said and done because they charge you like $2,000 for an automatic air gun and then another $800 for the MQL and you can piece this together using the same freaking parts they use with the exception of you'd have to make a little bracket which um, based on what I've seen you can do I don't think you'll have any problems with brackets so um, I don't know that I would pay $3,000 or $4,000, whatever it ends up being, for that if I had it to do over again. But I would get the, the rear chip logger. And of course, probing. And again, this is just my opinion. No machine should be sold without probing, or bought, I should say. Um, there's no other feature that I know of that pays for itself faster than probing. Um, and that's, that's about it. Um, I mean, it's got a little uh, little tool tray in the front. You've got the air gun every Haas has, and you got your coolant wash down kit. Um, oh, the other thing I opted for on it was I got a bigger coolant pump, um, and I don't even know if that's necessary now because I think they did upgrade their pumps. But uh, me personally, I'm a, obviously I'm a big believer in coolant. I think you need enough volume and pressure. To do whatever job is going to come along. Um, so, yeah, overall, if I was going to buy another machine for the shop, it would be another DM. I, I'm not a real big fan of Haas Lays. Um, so, we've got a VF6, we've got a Toyota Horizontal, we've got a Haas Lays, um, that VF2, the DM, and then Back in the back there, we've got a Mazak, it's an Enigrex, uh, and I can honestly say that if I was going to get another machine today, it would be another DM, and probably the DM too, because when you think about it, the little bit of extra money that you spend for that eight, extra eight inches of x-axis travel, it's money well spent. Anyway, hopefully this helps in some way, and... Uh, I'll talk to you again soon.